Welcome. We've all seen the tragedy that is going on in Texas at the moment with this deep freeze and all the resulting problems from it. However, if you come right down to it, Texans, you only have yourselves to blame for this problem. We've been warned about it for decades and done nothing about it and elected politicians that will do nothing about it. So let's take a look at what the real problems are here and how they can be solved. Yes, it is a critical situation in Texas. 21 deaths have been attributed to the cold weather so far. Over 2 million Texans at one point had lost power. That's nearly 10% of the Texas population. Now there are problems with water and gas shortages. In one city, there's over 2,500 water main breaks that need to be fixed. Plus water pipe bursts in homes and businesses that have to be fixed before the water can be turned back on. I keep hearing in these reports that this is unprecedented. It's anything but unprecedented. This has happened before, and four very bad years were 1983, 1989, 2011, and 2021. In fact, it was the 1965 event that forced the formation of ERCOT, which is the Energy Reliability Council of Texas in 1969. So immediately, everybody is playing the blame game. Abbott initially blamed the Green New Deal, which of course doesn't exist yet, so that's a bit of a stretch. He then blamed failures in the solar wind uh, energy supply, which uh, several Texan representatives did likewise, only to find out later that in fact it was the solar and wind energy coming online more quickly that enabled the restoration of power to lots of Texas households. And in fact, it was the failure of the natural gas system that was the major cause of the problems. So then he blames ERCOT, but this ERCOT was set up by the politicians, and so that's a little bit of a uh, um, stretch as well. Donald Trump amusingly just blamed the Democratic governor of Texas, which, which of course Abbott is a Republican. I would agree that ERCOT is the root cause, but the way ERCOT was set up by the politician is actually the real root cause. Texans run their own isolated grid system, and you can see that by the power outages across the country, the Texas rather stands out. But it is also worthy of note that two parts of Texas uh, were not particularly heavily involved in this problem. That's the El Paso region and the panhandle of Texas. And that is because they don't run on the ERCOT system. But they have the same, they have the same bad weather. The point of the ERCOT system is that no power crosses state borders, in or out. So when they're in trouble, they can't draw on their neighboring states to help them out. And that's part of the problem. They, why, why do they do this? It prevents them from having to bother with federal regulations, uh, which is all very laudable, but it obviously also adds to problems like this when they occur. One of the regulations requires states to weatherize their power infrastructure. Uh, but so in Texas, those regulations are not operative. And of course, the power companies there have not bothered to do so, which is why when you get a cold snap, Texas has a problem. So let's assess the current problem, if you'll forgive the pun. Texas lost 46 megawatts of generating capacity as a result of the cold weather. Most of the loss was from the natural gas generators because one, the generators themselves froze up. Two, the natural gas supply lines froze up. Now there was some loss of wind turbines as they froze, but all of these problems are due to a lack of weatherization of the ERCOT system, which would have been solved if they had followed reg regulations uh, on the federal level. They had to institute rolling blackouts to prevent a catastrophic collapse of the entire Texas grid. Apparently they were seconds away from that happening when they started the rolling blackout. Another problem here is that Texans waste a lot of energy. Texas is the number one state for energy usage in the country. It uses 13 quadrillion British thermal units every year. That's more than California, Florida, New York combined. Per capita, they're ranked sixth in the country, all behind the northern tier states, which have very, very cold winters regularly. Each Texan uses about 500 million BTUs, or about uh, 146 megawatt hours per year. Texas cannot claim that it wasn't warned. 
After the 2011 event, 300 page report by the Federal Energy Research Center uh, and was largely ignored by the Texans. It pointed out that there was always drops in gas output in cold weather because of the freezing of gas lines. It pointed out of past grid failures and said they will happen again if no measures are taken and that is exactly what has happened. They recommended that all these energy infrastructures be weatherized to prevent problems when there's cold weather. They weren't because the implementation by the power companies was made voluntary and no company is going to spend a lot of money when it doesn't need to. No matter what that does as far as people's lives are concerned. Texas, there are some easy solutions. Why don't you try some of them? Weatherize your power infrastructure as you've been advised to do for years. Join the Western or Eastern grid so that if you do have a power issue, you can pull power from those grids from the places that have excess power to offer. Focus more on renewables than fossil fuels. Wind and solar enabled the power to be restored earlier to many of the people in Texas because they came online much faster than the fossil fuel suppliers did. The last thing you can do is elect officials who are more concerned about the welfare of the people than the profits of their rich friends. So, I hope you're all safe. I hope you get uh, warm quickly and you get your water back soon. So until next time, goodbye.